Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at the labor market diagram, a pretty critical diagram to understand um, for your explanations and really understanding of what unemployment means and explaining the different kinds of unemployment and being able to represent them in a diagram. So let's take a look at the diagram first. All right, well check out the labor market diagram. Um, there's some different things that you got to look at right away and you kind of got to flip your mind around really quickly because what you have is a really simple aggregate demand for labor, demand for labor curve, and you have an aggregate supply of labor curve. And then you also have this yellow curve here, which is kind of adding a new concept, and this is the total labor force or labor force curve. Okay, so what does it mean? Think about it. Aggregate demand for labor. Well, who demands labor? Firms demand labor. I work at an international school in Santiago, Chile, as you know. And that school every year goes to a job fair and does what? Demands labor at a certain wage rate. Okay, so this is not consumers. This is, this is those who are looking to consume uh, labor. So this is aggregate demand for labor. And the, the curve sloping upward is the aggregate supply of labor because these are people like teachers or workers of all kinds who, in the case of the international school, these are people who are looking to supply their labor to the marketplace, right? And, of course, where the aggregate demand for labor, firms looking to hire people, and the aggregate supply of labor, this line representing people's willingness to work according to an average real wage meet, then you have a deal. You have people working, right? So this is the, the, the WE represents the average real wage in equilibrium, and the QE represents the quantity of the number of workers um, at the equilibrium point. Okay, so just to start off with, and I'm going to get into some more technical parts of how, of how all of this works, but what I want you to realize on a really simple thing is that the, agri the, the labor market demand diagram represents the relationship between the aggregate demand for labor, which in this case would be firms, they're looking to consume labor, the school I work for is looking to consume my labor, they're going to pay me, what, a wage for that, and as a result, they'll find the number of workers that they want, okay? So the aggregate supply of labor, that's the actual people who are taking the jobs, aggregate supply of labor. And then the labor force are the total number of people in the workforce, right? That this might be people who are not working. Of course, this is the labor force represents all people of working age in a particular country. Okay, so if you just use the logic here, right? Here is the wage rate. And if there's an equilibrium quantity of number of workers, QE, and a wage rate, then what you'll see is there's a gap right here between A and B. This gap is representative of the natural rate of unemployment, which in most industrialized countries is somewhere around 5%. And I made my 5 look like an 8. Somewhere around 5%. And we're going to talk about the different types of of, of unemployment that there can be. But in this, in this area right here between A and B, and you can see at the bottom of the screen, right, the, na the natural rate of unemployment is the distance between A and B. So this would mean in a healthy economy, as you know or you will learn shortly, um, that this is made up of a combination of frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment, which is to be expected in an expanding economy. So roughly an unemployment rate of around 5%, which is a natural rate of inflation. Okay, so again, take a look at this diagram. On the, on the vertical axis, you have the average real wage rate, which is representative of all, like the, the aggregate wage rate for all, uh, for all wage earners. It could be teachers, it could be assembly line workers, it could be... Salespeople, people delivering pizza, motorcycle mechanics, bankers, whatever. You think of a job, this is the average real wage rate, right? And of course, down here is the total number of workers. All right, so if the economy, if every single human being in the labor force were employed, right, then you would have 
this quantity one, this would be where everybody in the labor force is, in, is truly employed, but there is a natural rate of unemployment, and, and that means that there is always frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment, which makes this gap from A into B, which is roughly around 5%. Okay, so if you understand all of this basic, the way in which this diagram works, it's really, really helpful because you also are going to understand that the aggregate demand for labor, this curve right here, is dependent on the regular aggregate demand curve in any economy. Because as aggregate demand increases and more output is produced, you can assume then that more labor is demanded, right? Because if aggregate demand goes out, and I'll show you on the next slide, if aggregate demand goes out, then they're going to produce more, which means that this is going to go up. Average wage rates, we'll talk about wage rates in another video, but the wage rates on average should go up, and you're going to cut down on the gap between, um, between the aggregate supply of labor curve and the total labor force, and you're going to have a situation, probably going to be temporary, where you're going to have lower than a natural rate of unemployment. Okay, but also as aggregate demand falls, the opposite is going to be true. If aggregate demand in the regular economy drops, and I'll show you in the next slide, then you can assume that the aggregate demand for labor curve, this curve, is going to slide inward. Okay, so get this idea in your head. It's a really helpful diagram. Make sure you know how to draw it. Make sure you understand the relationships between A and B. And just even if you don't have it totally clear in your mind right now, that's okay because as you go on to the next video, you're going to have a better understanding of what natural rate of unemployment means and also what the components of natural rate of unemployment are, frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment. And then we'll also look at the impact of demand-deficient unemployment, which would slide the aggregate demand for labor uh, inward, or an expansion of aggregate demand which would mean that the aggregate demand for labor curve would go out, okay? So that's a lot of new information. Might be kind of swimming around in your head, and that's okay. But just trust yourself that it's going to come clear. And as you move through this series of videos, you're really going to have a further understanding of it. All right. So just to conclude, take a look. Expressing cyclical or demand-deficient unemployment. Over here, we have the regular aggregate... Um, demand and supply of labor curve, right? Here is the labor market. Same, is the exact same curve as we had last time. Over here, you have a Keynesian view. Look at the long run, long run aggregate supply curve. And you have a situation where in the beginning, this is aggregate demand, right? So regular aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve. You're going to have aggregate demand go inward, which would mean that demand deficient. That means that there's a deficiency in the demand in the marketplace which is also called cyclical unemployment. And so look at the relationship. There's a drop in aggregate demand. AD1 slides into AD2. And that means that there are, there's less demand in the marketplace. And you can imagine as a result of less demand, there's going to be lower average price level and a lower quantity of output produced in the marketplace. And the impact of that is going to be impact on the labor market. The fact that the aggregate demand for labor curve is going to shift inward as well to ADL2 because as aggregate demand goes down, suppliers are going to say, you know what? We're not going to demand at every price level, at every real, not price level, but average wage rate, we're willing to pay less because demand has dropped. And as a result of that, we are going to cut supply cut supply, when every time there's cut in supply, you know what that means, chaucito, people lose their jobs, okay, which would have downward pressure on wages, right, and in theory, you would have a wage rate that drops and a quantity and number of workers in the marketplace that drops, but as we'll see, that the wage rate becomes a little bit sticky because these wage rates don't actually change that quickly, but that's information for a different video. All right, I hope this was helpful. You're looking at the aggregate Demand for labor and the aggregate supply for labor curve, also known as the labor market, labor market diagram. Have a thorough understanding of this. It's going to serve you well in your studies of unemployment. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.